Hey, this is on my own plot. With Nikki D. Welcome to this episode of On My Own Vibe. I am sitting here with a really special guest, uh, Divine Ray. Go ahead and introduce yourself to the people. Peace, people. I am Divine Ray. My pronouns are they, them, and he. I'm a pro-dominant energy healer, a kink educator, BDSM practitioner, uh, and many more things. <laughs> <laughs> Performer, and um, yeah, mostly... I'm just a fully expressed being of creator on earth to put it in a one liner for you. Oh, I I really love that. The gift of expression. And I think sometimes we don't as people and human beings sit back and think about how often we have the opportunity to truly express ourselves. Well, it's not that we don't have the opportunity, right? It's more like that. We might not know ourselves enough to truly express, express who we really are. That. So that's pretty dope, yo, mm-hmm. um, that you live in a world that you are completely free. That's, that's definitely super dope. Thank you. I mean, uh-huh. I've had to build that world and give myself permission, you know, to then exist in that space. So, um, yeah, you, you mentioned like people, um, really not knowing themselves, uh, uh, to be able to express, but a lot of times we do know, we just don't, you know, follow those curiosities or give ourselves that permission to not care what everyone else may or may not think. Uh, yeah. You know, I had another question for you, but I, I want to talk more about that. Um, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> the, cause that's true, right? Like we, I, I was reading somewhere, I think it was a meme and it was talking about how adults or people actually know exactly who they are when they're children. It's everything else and mostly adults who are telling them this is not something that's feasible for you around them that changes our thoughts and our feelings about things that we've already loved. And um, I want to talk about giving permission to yourself. And what does that look like? Like, what did that look like for you? Um, It's a mental process. I think with anything, uh, you envision something or you have an idea or curiosity. And um, some people kill the thought, they dismiss it then. So that first permission is even being able to think outside of you know your current reality or um, just the way that you exist. Um, after, beyond then, you know the, the ideas and the thoughts turn into urges and yearnings to maybe learn more, maybe see more to make a better decision for yourself. Um, and you just have to say yes to the things that are persistent. I won't say every single curiosity or desire needs to be followed through, but the things that are our soul journey are kind of the ones, if you look back in maybe every single decade of your life, there's a, uh, a chance or a reminder of this thing or something that reminds you of something when you were a child which may have been the very first introduction of it. So we, there's multi, it's like with anything, a consent permission is multifaceted, multi-layered. But like I said, some people don't even allow themselves to think about a new reality or think of a new a way to express themselves or activity, et cetera. Yes, 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 I agree. So, you know, some of that stuff, I'm pretty sure you run into and have conversations within uh, the BDSM realm. Um, in the world. And so I'm wondering, is the, is, did your freedom of self lead you into wanting to learn more about BDSM and um, the culture? Um, I would say BDSM came later, but yeah, through that same like pathway, kink and fetish, well, first of all, uh, being expressed and kind of being a slut and being sexually curious at an early age, um, allowed me to, uh, afforded me different experiences, put me in different rooms and different places with different people. And those experiences shaped my curiosities, you know, from, you know, early adolescence or, you know, early teens when you're, or not teens. Yeah. Um, 
not, you know, like anything, not teen sex, but like 18, 19, getting into that exploration of sex and power, um, being freaky led me to want to try new things. So in that, I discovered kink, the kink world, beat fetishes, and then BDSM as a lifestyle and a discipline, because there's a big difference between mm -hmm. fetish and kink and, all, and BDSM is more the discipline. I say once I became aware of a, making it a lifestyle and practicing, that's becomes the BDSM. Like once you start learning how to uh, train and do things properly, that takes you out of the fetish and kink world. But yeah, it's all that same path of exploration and being free. For me, it was being free sexually and being like, hey, I wouldn't mind someone, uh, you know, spanking me or someone asking me to spank them. It's like, oh, you know, we start off kinky, just just having fun and playing. But then you're like, oh, there's tools and toys for this. And like, oh, there's lessons. And, you know, you learn different things. The, the more you allow yourself to receive uh, information, whatever way it's delivered. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So what would you say? Um, and I, I kind of want to break the kink and a BDSM as a discipline thing down because I think in uh, the black queer community, you know, I think, how do I say this? Uh, I've had some other kinksters and BDSM folks on the podcast. And um, one of the things that is consistent throughout all the conversations is that I think the black queer community is experiencing this, this renaissance of exploration whether that's spiritual or uh, sensual or sexual, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I've been to a couple of events and stuff that were kind of, okay, I'm just gonna stop. <laughs> they, they were harmful in the fact that they presented uh, BDSM in a way that it is kink, right? And I don't think that a lot of folks do understand that there's a difference. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit more about um, how to tell if something's more on the kinky side versus if you are, I don't want to say ready, but interested in going into the discipline of BDSM. I'm not sure okay. if that question makes sense. Yeah, it does. <laughs> and um, I'm intuitive and empathic, so I can pick up on like the, you know, people, the, the gist of it. Um, but yeah, so for what I uh, teach people in my coaching practice, um, who are, you know, pretty much asking those same things, BDSM, so let me say it in reverse, kink and fetish would be the like the gospels of bdsm as the religion mm -hmm. so the act kink and fetishes are the activities and they're not necessarily um you don't have to be engaged in kink and fetish to be engaged in bdsm um the, a lot of the training and stuff goes into it so i think i got a little ahead of myself <laughs> like a, a kink <laughs> is something that you um you you make sexy that's not necessarily considered sexual uh for example spanking could all it could be a kink um we normally don't associate spanking with punishment you know outside of sex or we don't associate it with sex outside of bdsm like when back in the day when it was okay to spank your children or when people thought yeah. that that was cool, um, that was, it wasn't necessarily sexual, but m because we're developing as sexual beings from the moment we shoot out the pussy, those things become uh, arousal and which later trigger sexual response. So fetish is something that you must have in order to come or to orgasm like you cannot have sex without this thing so a lot of people we we use words um just because based off social acceptance of them so people say i will have a shoe fetish and to you know insinuate that they really love shoes mm -hmm. um but it, the real shoe fetish people need need shoes in their sexual activity in order to be aroused and to come to you know orgasm um, and there's very few that are deep like that on a psychological level, but we use it, we use the word f uh, freely. So fetishes is just engaging in things that people need to be aroused. And kinks are your, your things that aren't necessarily sexual that you use within that. So fetishes can also be kinks, but kinks are not always fetishes. And it's so many 
intersections and, and layers that that's why there's so many panels and discussions and confusion. Mm -hmm. So just for simplicity of it, BDSM is DS and centered where there's a master and a, a sub or a slave, a top and a bottom, a power exchange. Two people choking each other in the bed can be kinky, but not necessarily be practicing deep BDSM. Y'all are just having kinky sex. Now, when one of those persons assumes the authority position, and not just because I'm I'm the one on top now spanking you, because domination is definitely different than topping. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna let you finish, but we're definitely yes. gonna go into that. <laughs> the submission is definitely different than bottoming, right? So, mm -hmm. where um, B BDSM comes into where you're making it a a practice and a discipline. And it's outside of the bedrooms. And even though there's some sexual training, sexual acts, there's a lot of things that are completely non-sexual that are, for me, for example, working on self-accountability and helping people become their best self by, uh, you know, instilling protocol, rules, and formality in the way that we operate um, between each other. So that's the big difference between BDSM. It's a discipline. It's all these things combined, which make it part of the practice. Like if you have a religion, part of going to church is part of that religion, uh, praying every night is part of that religion, eating certain foods or, and et cetera, et cetera. All those things are the kinks and fetishes of BDSM, like spanking, trainings, tying up. All the disciplines are the ways that BDSM manifest, but they don't necessarily entail everything about BDSM. A lot of it's psychological um, and it's, you know, power exchange beyond just sex. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that breakdown. That's one of the most comprehensive breakdowns that I've heard. I, I mean, I'm learning as we're talking too, so. <laughs> <laughs> My job is done. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's great. So you said something um, in the explanation that, what was it, domination is different than topping. Right. Um, <laughs> my mind is racing right now. <laughs> okay, so from a personal standpoint, I'm a very reserved person, right? Like, I'm not one of those people who needs to um, force my influence or power on folks, um, mm -hmm. including partners, right? I'm I'm very much reserved, and so when I start having conversations about dynamics and me being a little bit more dominant. Um, some of my partners have requested for me to, I don't want to say be, because I'm also like 6'1 and a good 170. So I could wow. physically <laughs> um, um, dominate someone. Yeah, but I, I, it really depends on my mood and things like that. There's other stuff right. that goes into it. And, you know, I was trying to explain to one of my partners is like, I'm very reserved with this. So if you have an expectation of what my domination looks like, I'm not sure if if we're on the same page, right? I could top mm -hmm. you all day. That's easy. I could top you in one of my feminine moods. That that, and, and I don't think people understand the difference. So like, can you help people like me explain the difference between domination and topping? Okay, <laughs> most definitely. <laughs> um, so I like to consider topping um, more of a verb uh, and the actions mm -hmm. that are happening within uh, a situation there's within a topping and bottoming situation there is an exchange of power but it's not necessarily psychological it's i'm laying down i'm assuming the bottom position you're above me usually even you know the bottom and top might actually be about physical location in the scene it doesn't have to be a mental state of either one of those people the bottom may be the dominant in that situation mm -hmm. so a dominant is or domination for me is one who's assuming the responsibility and the control um and leading beyond just physical activity it's psychological it's being assertive and being with regardless of who's in the room with you that's your energy that dominant energy is just a way of existence and it expresses itself through the verb which would be topping but it's not always about physical you know connections so people who consider themselves dominant look at getting spanked 
um, are getting uh, laying down to be tied up, they look at it as a negative because they're associating it with submission. Mm -hmm. But someone can try to dominate me and I'll laugh at their face. Like you can try to assert yourself over me and I'm only five, six and 125 pounds <laughs> on a good day. And a lot of people that I dominate physically and mentally and top physically um, are bigger than me. And so, yeah, I have that chance to exert that physical expression of my dominance, but that can't always like someone like you, if if we were engaged in uh like ds activity your mm -hmm. your psychological submission to me is what would allow you as a six foot person to let me i mean i could take you down i know the self-defense moves and i could really do it <laughs> but you would go more willingly because you want to play that's the psychological submission yeah. me just staring there trying to grab you by your knee and pick you up and force you you know, you, if you're not willing to submit in that way, you ain't going. Yeah. So that's the difference between topping and, and dominating that domination and submission is a mental thing. I have to be, I have to want to be assertive over you. That dominance is a gift. It's a blessing. The, the, uh, aggressive sex or being topped, um, comes from that. Like you said, that mood that I'm in one, but anybody could do that. Like, you can have, you can top someone and still, you know, respect them as your boss or your, or your daddy or your dom. So I mean, it's just about like having more conversations and separating them. I had to come to the realization when I wanted to experience things for myself, I'm putting, I'm whipping people. Uh, I'm a, I'm a sensation slut. I'm a, I like sex. I like parts of my body rubbed. I love my body in in totality like exploring sensations that it gives me so when i'm sitting here topping and giving to everyone else and seeing the good old time that they're having yeah i want in on that it's just about trusting someone that understands you're giving me an experience you're not dominating me so that's um that's me and my boundary so yeah everybody has their own like mental limit to what they will su submit to some i'm a what i call apex predator type dominant where even other dominants kind of sometimes submit to me mm -hmm. and that's that's okay I respect that they feel safe in that I don't look at it like power you know uh it's not an ego trip to me I just always look for someone that I can possibly have that same safety with yes uh <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> um <laughs> it's crazy because again uh, I've been having a lot of conversations about masculinity and what does that look like for uh, non male body folks. And, you know, one of my friends is really into dating other mask of centered folks. And she was like, you know, I, I just like creating a really safe space. Yeah. And that's what it looks like for me. It's like somewhere where you know, another mass person is not going to get ridiculed for wanting penetration. She's not going to uh, be forced to think that because uh, she dates women. So, and trans men, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah. So <laughs> these people that she dates, she wants them to feel like themselves and comfortable mm -hmm. and realize that it's okay to maybe soften up if that's your thing or, mm -hmm. or just feel desired was the biggest thing that I think the reason why people gravitate towards her, to be honest, I think is that ability to be seen and desired in a way that uh, it's not about necessarily me putting my power down. Mm -hmm. um, it's like you also see me as a powerful, dominant person who just wants to be pleasured too. Right. Yes. Yeah. 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 So I'm like, there's some, I, I'm, I'm digging it. This is uh, a lot of my conversations have been talking about all these different aspects of, um, of different sexualities and sensualities and yeah. identities and what does that mean to us? Um, I was going to ask you, uh, cause I, 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 um, on one of your podcasts, I heard uh, you discussing spirituality and BDSM and how they can go hand in hand. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit more about that because I think um, it's not just about presentation and uh uh, uh, sexuality and all these other things, I think spirituality comes into play with a lot of this too. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd love to talk with you more about that. 
and your your thoughts on it. Yeah, um, that's actually my whole uh, approach to BDSM is through um, a spiritual approach and understanding that as an expression of creator or as a piece, as a part of creator and a part of creation, that I, it is my birthright to experience and enjoy every aspect of my experience. So shame and other things are not, um, they're not in us naturally. They're ingrained in us through the psychological and cellular trauma that we inherit from being black on this planet. And we have been denied our access to pleasure um, as a people. Like, I just have to start with that statement. That just mm. shot into my head. So the way that I um, was able to kind of evolve into this fully expressed being was by battling the duality of having a spiritual awakening, but coming from a sexually, a very sex centered life um, and being really powerful in my sexuality and just suddenly having to, you know, to counter all the years that my, my acknowledgement of spirit um, did not exist. So I had to basically, I struggled back and forth going, like going from trying to walk a spiritual path and suppressing my sexuality and my desires and still not coming to the level of consciousness where I can understand that my art and my sexuality are one and the same. My, that creative energy, I had to go in deeper into my spirituality to learn that part of that healing comes with acceptance, comes with balance, learning how to implement spirit into everything that I do without mm. feeling shameful about it because there's nothing outside of creation. So everything is a part of spirit. It's just spirituality is like, do you live that way in acknowledgement of it? So if you're running around just sacral chakra based and just active from the lower chakras, you can experience uh, sexual awakening and not even know what's going on. And that's kind of what happened by me exploring. I triggered my own sexual, I mean, spiritual awakening and, and for years battled back and forth. So the deeper I got in each like kind of transgression, um, I freed myself from that shame. Like I can't keep living without kink. It's such a part of my life or yeah. I can't not meditate uh, after I come out of spanking someone. It helps me ground. So all these things, like I start connecting the dots as I go back and forth from each polarity that I, you know, try to exist in. And at some point that gets exhausting as fuck. Like, so I had to, it's just a not it's a knowing that I came into an understanding and an acceptance of self. Like, yes, you are spiritual. Yes, you are sexual. Why are those things at war with yeah. you? So we have to give ourselves permission to implement our spirituality into our sexuality. We have to give ourselves permission to use our spirituality to heal, use our sexuality to get deeper into our spirituality and not have such a rift between who we are. Um, that that totality and understanding the connections, understanding how those sexual traumas manifest in your daily life and how to, you know, how playfully connecting with other bodies and how touch is healing and how, you know, you, you're drawn to connect with other people because your soul desires to heal and to be full and not just because you're a sinner, like all these things were slowly revelate, like revealed to me through my own travels and studies and, and learning and understanding and my discovery of Eastern Tantra versus necessarily the sexually based Western, you know, popularized Tantra helped me realize like I'm making love when I'm eating, I'm making love when I'm breathing. It's like, 
being in, in connection with creator. I'm a Taurus anyway. We hedonistic as fuck. <laughs> I happen to have um, synesthesia. So it's like food would literally be giving me orgasms. And I'm like, how can this, how can these feelings be so wrong or so disconnected if I'm sitting over here, but I'm getting the same feeling when I'm in communion with God over here. Like you're, you're not going to keep convincing me that there's a wall between them. It's like liberation is literally hidden from us so that we don't just exist in our higher state. I'm not, you know, we can get into conspiracies about why that is, but just <laughs> black beings and being magical are healing it comes through our pleasure. We've been denied the opportunity to laugh and to smile. So we have to reclaim that. And all, a lot of those ways comes from not being afraid to, you know, pray, meditate, and then make love, you know, like set up a temple, honor your, your lovers and, you know, set up the, the mood and touch and connect and be grateful of each other, recognize the God within each other. Like, how can you not? you know connect them too if you're really feeling um deeper than the 3d it's just it's just a understanding that i feel like everyone comes into if you're really on the path and really doing the work um so when i bump into spiritualists who are like still kind of sexually repressed i i, I want i feel compassion for them i don't judge mm -hmm. i kind of just you know i feel the judgment from them um and i lose a lot of people when i tell them that everything is sacred um, mm. and because they, you know, they can't understand when I mean everything is part of something that is sacred, like even if it's lower vibrational, because everyone wants to hit you with that. Oh, why do babies die? You know, you know, I I don't have the reason why babies die, but I understand that it's a part of a process that brings our awareness to why are those babies dying over there. Now we can do something about it. You know, it's like everything has its purpose and reason, and I, I don't believe that sexuality and the things that people consider dark are necessarily dark in a, in a yeah. negative way. That yeah. was a lot. <laughs> no, no, I, I, you hit it right on the nail. You know, this whole season is about pleasure, right? And one of the, one of the uh, interviews, I interviewed a chef and, you know, she was talking about how much she loves feeding people and how good it makes her feel. And I do think there is, like you said, a connection between our enjoyment in life and living and uh, fellowship um, with the same mm -hmm. feeling that we have with sex. And um, uh, it's not just, you know, physical touch based engagements, but the, the, to me, that is the same type of joy. Mm -hmm. um, I, I compared it to uh, sports and okay. Cause someone, I don't remember what it was, but someone said, oh, I think I was talking to my mother and she was like, I don't think you really loved basketball. And I was like, it wasn't that I didn't really love basketball. What it was is I love beating the shit out of teams. Like I love that feeling of, <laughs> you know, I work this hard. I don't have to really think about doing things anymore. This is what I'm yeah. saying here. By college, I was pretty much burnt out, but, <laughs> um, but when I was, actually in that zone and it kind of met for me it was it wasn't just performance based it was fearlessness too like i didn't mm -hmm. care if someone dropped the ball or something like that i was never one of those kids mm -hmm. that would like get in their feelings about stuff um but when i performed i performed and it felt great it felt great to be on this team and i sex to me with a partner that we openly communicate um, that we are physically actually in shape enough to do what we want to do. Yeah. So we're not distracted. Feels very similar. Um, eating food that tastes amazing feels very similar. Yeah. Um, smoking a blunt that's just dope, that's like that happy <laughs> medium. <laughs> yes. yes. It feels very similar. So right. like, no, I, and honestly, even um, for a while, I had this habit of randomly showing up at churches because uh, my friends would invite me or just, I don't know, somehow like for a good span of a year, I was just, I went to a Korean Baptist church. I went to non denominate I just, I was just there randomly. We're chopping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I would notice there's this common thing. And like, I, I like some things I was like, no, nah, this doesn't feel real. Like I have this thing about fake Christians. <laughs> and, yeah. but I do think regardless of whatever the religion, religion is, there's this common spiritual just vibe for the folks who are really doing the work. And 
I, I, it feels the same to me too. It really does. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I just, I, I wish we as a people would focus more on um, understanding what that truly means instead of being put in boxes and not understanding how some of these social constructs got here to put these put us in these boxes in the first place. Right. You know? But that's um, what we're bringing awareness to. So this is a whole new black experience that's you know blossoming on the planet and i'm happy like to be a part of um you know to bring a different type of being for people to embrace um so because i end up being like the first some, some people's first introduction into like trans people into bdsm spirituality the combination of them too and also you mentioned like um rolling a blunt like how you connected the two things like their spirituality and everything. Like I enjoy the communion of and the ritual and the intention I put into my herbs and adding in the other herbs. And my love adds, you know, sage and roses and lavender and any other smokable herb that people feel drawn to. Like, you know, the the intentional giving yourself a burnt offering as and it's in a way to enjoy yourself, there's spirituality in everything. Like that's why so many people enjoy rolling blunts and smoking blunts because it's the ritual of it, the practice of it, the breath awareness. It's like breath work and within that even, you know, we don't even realize all the ways that we're communing, communing with spirit at all times, regardless of being conscious of it or not. Like that's the difference between spirituality and just, walking around sleep is this like acknowledgement of (laughs) (laughs) no I fully agree I fully agree um so my next question is uh with all that being said what do you think is your favorite thing or favorite things about your BDSM practice um the my favorite thing is receiving service but <laughs> <laughs> the overall cuz i have i'm i'm pretty spoiled um because i've built that that lifestyle around me and um when i i'm sometimes it can be hard to uh, always appreciate that so that would be the main thing if i had to say one but overall i appreciate the formality and the politeness that i can control like when I step out of my BDSM bubble and I talk to regular people out in the world and and like interactions with strangers you realize how much more um sheltered that you are within BDSM where people say please and thank you and yes sir no sir and may I and um that overall you know protocol of politeness is what I love the most, even within, you know, different households within BDSM. It's mm-hmm. like, sir, madams, and, you know, gods and goddesses, we respect each other within the community by titles and honoraries. It's like, it's like uh, black, com- black BDSM community to me is like black royalty. Um, you know, we are the expressed people. And we, you know, like acknowledge each other and within our positions of power and um, it's respectable. You know, people form alliances and disalliances and enemy ships or whatever um, based on who they think a certain lord or sir might be over there doing whatever it, it's all it's all um it's all role play essentially but when you make it your life like what isn't role play like when you go work for a certain company for uh 40 years are you not playing a role of cubicle worker you know so i choose yep my role in life and so i love finding people who are also in that similar type of role play so that's overall like the formality protocol interaction with other people who understand that universal protocol and and making our community more aware of more accepted universal protocols so we could be acknowledged globally because we are you know doing it our own way with soul but we're you know making new standards of what BDSM is. So I really enjoy that. (laughs) (laughs) Great. Well, thank you for coming on with me. Um, Can you you tell the people where they can find you? I am located everywhere. I have um, 
um, my own personal family's website, House of Ray, BDSM.com, where we offer educational uh, tutorials and uh, events, etc. coaching services. I'm also on Instagram for more of my hedonistic displays at divine underscore kink. And I do um, share actually a lot of uh, educational information there. I share workshops and other ways that people can build their best kinky lives. And beyond that, I'm just in the universe in the wind. So you can just think real hard about Divine Ray and I will appear. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, thank you again. This has been another episode on All My Own Vibes. I'm your host, Nikki D. And catch y'all next time.